Hello and a very warm welcome to this Bitwig practice session. In this episode I talk about a template for flexible audio routing where I already um, did a video about it, how you can do that. And I created a template that you may want to use or may want to adjust to your own needs. And this is what I want to show you that you can download. But let's get started. So this is the template and um, this template is built upon the idea of my uh, last video, the collaboration and audio routing. And um, this consists of uh, three um, things you can do with it. So um, when the first thing is uh, to have a production environment ready when loading a template. And normally I start with a blank page or with a blank arrangement and just use something like a polysynth or maybe another synth. Um, but polysynth is always a good start. <laughs> so, and I build up this, this um, template to have just a a production template ready. The second um, reason uh, you could use that is when you um, start co collaborating with people and you want to have different outputs for your, for your uh, volume. So you can use that to uh, maybe lower the volume on your side, but the other side always gets the same volume. And uh, um, a third reason is for jamming with other, other people um, where you can do the same, like uh, using your own volume while everybody else is getting um, another uh, volume or the, the same volume, the same output volume. And as you can see, I have uh, two groups here. When you, when you jam in this uh, track view with, for example, the polysynth, Every, everybody should uh, get your polysynth. You don't get the polysynth because I didn't connect the polysynth. So now you hear the polysynth. This is what everybody else gets. This speaker's output. I get the headphones output in my audio device. So, and this you get. And um, when you are jamming or people are jamming and you want to, and you want to search an, a sound or you want to create a sound and you don't want to do that in, a, in that uh, jamming area where everybody plays to not disturb the others, you can go to your headphone group. And in your headphone group, you have two empty um, tracks and you will see there are always one or two empty tracks in the groups. And with the empty tracks, I normally have them empty because of the coloring. Um, so the, the track is already uh, in a correct color and I just can use Control D to duplicate it or to uh, use the right click. Oh, sorry, I have to, I had it in German. So I just uh, put it back in English. So it's late in the evening. So I change it, uh, I duplicate it with here, right click and uh, duplicate and add, for example, I don't know, FM4, for example, in here. And I can start jam. And you see there's, there's going something on, but you don't hear something. And if I found my patch or I dialed in my patch, something like that, I just can um, move this uh, track down to, for example, my keys and patch, pets, maybe like this. And if I start playing like now, you start hearing things. So as long as I'm above here, the audio routing gets automatic here from the instrument track and my headphone master. And in the headphone master, it goes to no output, but here in my listen effect track and the listen effect track is here and this effect track goes only on my headphones. So um, this is a, I think a very good um, way of uh, trying out things while other people are jamming and not disturbing them. So now explaining the track 
pre-master group. Um, this is a normal way I organize my project. Um, I have the uh, vocals on the highest with the yellow color, FX with the green color, then keys, leads, and pet in orange, and the bass uh, in brown and the drums in blue and on the lower part there are some effect tracks. In every group there is one or two empty groups, what I explained, because of the coloring and you can just uh, duplicate that what you need. In the effects group is the same. And in the key leads pads I have one empty instrument track because I normally use an instrument track here. Um, if I want to have an audio track, I can, can just duplicate that and um, yeah, use some, I don't know, some audio in here. And Bitwig is converting that to an audio track or to a hybrid track if I have an instrument in here. Now it's uh, converting into um, a simple audio track. And that's why I'm, I only have a instrument track here. Um, normally I could use that the same thing here. Maybe I will take the audio track out and just let Bitwig convert if I, when I need that. I don't know. This was my first or second attempt for this project file. So then I have a polysynth here and this polysynth is the one of the, I think it's the only device that it, no it's not the only device that it's activated. So if I open that project file, that template, I start in here and I can start um, play something. So next is Polymer, it's deactivated. You can activate it with uh, uh, in the inspector panel over here. Or you can just press, press Alt-A to activate or deactivate it again. Then a phase four, same thing, a search XT, same thing, and activate it as well. Then the bass instrument, then a polysynth and a phase four, drums, empty uh, track, E head, E snare, and activated kick. And on this keys, leads, and pads, there are two more devices like a tool device and EQ, and both have already an audio sidechain in there. If I activate it, this is um, already linked to the e kick, so I don't have to link it to the e kick, for example. You can deactivate this in separate, and the EQ is the same already. If you activate it, the audio sidechain is already deactivated. You can click on it, Alt-A, or just here, right-click and active. And it's already linked to the e-kick, so you have your e-kick already in the audio sidechain if you need that. And uh, sure, you can move these devices around on the track and don't have to get it from your um, browser and add a modulator and add the e-kick and everything. Everything is already done. And then over here, I have a delay one and a reverb already in here, deactivated and a reverb in here, all, um, also deactivated. And that's the whole template. So um, maybe you find that useful. Maybe you have your own coloring, your own organization on tracks and which, uh, which order you are arranging um, all instruments and tracks and vocals and everything. Um, you can download that and change it or you can use it like it is. Um, that's okay. <laughs> you can do everything what you want with it. Um, I would be interested uh, what you do with it. If you use some uh, uh, similar approach or completely different approach, tell me about it. I'm very interested to hear about it because sometimes it's very difficult about uh, uh, to, to get to know how people arrange their beginnings or when they are like collaborating or jamming, how to how they um, start that or how they organize that, if they are organizing it or not. And this is one simple approach. Um, I do it and at the moment I'm very happy with that. So you can download that whole project, the template, and um, 
what I've done in this, this is, I think, not in the template you can download because I don't think um, uh, you want to use everywhere my uh, name and everything. I switch off the cam because down here there is the project panel and you should put in your name he in here. What There's my name, Odo Zendaidukai and uh, standard album name and the uh, current year and everything and my web page um, so every time you start a new track this is already um, pre-filled and this are uh, if you don't if you don't know that but i think you know that these are the tags that get into the mp3s or flacs and all uh, audio formats that are able to contain uh, ID tags or um, audio tags as well. So that's all about the um, template. Please let me know. Write me in the comments what you do. How is how is your way? Maybe you have some new ideas. We can put that in in, in that project file if you like that. The uh, download link you will find in the description or on the homepage. But I think in the description. And yeah, then I hope you stay healthy. See you soon and bye bye.